I'm Richard Thompson. I've been an automotive photographer for over 10 years. I've learned a few things along the way, and today I'm going to demonstrate some fundamental techniques I use to capture cars. I started my career just by loving cars, I think, like a lot of young guys, taking pictures of them and going to races. I'm a car guy. In addition to having a beautiful landscape and car like this, it's really important to use proper equipment to make these images and uh, also proper software to really do uh, the images justice that we're making. So today I'm going to be using the uh, Phase 1 IQ250 and uh, Capture One Pro 8 software to edit these images. This is our first location. We've just driven up around the switchback turn and uh, it's a nice advantage for the car to be here because we can get both above and below the car and show more extreme angles and uh, the way the car integrates into the environment. I'm shooting this on a 55 millimeter uh, wide angle lens to capture as much of the background as I can. This paint color really comes alive in bright light, so I'm using a polarizer uh, to kind of cut down on a little bit of reflection and get through the clear coat and really see the metal finish the sparkle in the paint. This is our second shot. We're going to take a walk and make a telephoto image of the car from a distance, which will be like a really flat graphic profile image of the car showing the uh, patterns of the car integrated into the patterns of all this rock. Another great thing about this IQ250 is that rather than have to haul a huge set of sticks over here to make sure I get what I need, I'm able to just hand hold the camera at a 400th of a second, which is completely sharp. We've come over here to shoot some uh, action shots of the car passing by the side of the road. I've got a circular polarizer on again, which is a third or two-thirds of a stop of ND. I'm going to be shooting around a sixtieth of a second, an aperture of uh, probably f12 to f16. So I'll be making some pans, which will work out to be what we call a whip pan. A lot of the background will be slightly blurred, and the car will be sharp. Practice makes perfect kind of activity. Just shoot a bunch of cars coming past, eventually you learn how to get it right in. All right, we've just finished two straightforward shots, so we're going to head back to our base camp and make the most of them in Capture One Pro 8. So we're back at base camp. I've got Capture One Pro 8 fired up and I've selected and I'm reviewing my images through the uh, star rating filtering system. With a camera like this, I've got everything in one frame and it's a pretty high contrast scene, so it's kind of remarkable to me that even the highlight areas are completely there and everything is there in the shadow. I'm going to use the new upgraded HDR tool and just pull a little bit more detail into the back of the car and recover some of the brighter highlights on the right side of the frame. The tool is incredibly easy to use and uh, really renders down very naturally with no halo effects and recovers all the highlights or shadows that you're looking for. There's a new clarity method called natural which enhances subtle micro contrast in the image like these rock textures without appearing overly crunchy or contrasty. I'm really happy with how this image is looking with these two quick simple adjustments. Uh, I'm going to finish it off by making some local adjustments, graduated filter, and a little bit of brushwork to draw the focus into the car. So I finished with this shot and I think we'll move on to the second location and the dynamic images. First thing I'm going to do is a very slight crop and rotation to make sure that the car is completely balanced. Shift of the white balance, which sort of brings the bottom of the frame into a color range that's a lot more copacetic with the top of the frame. And maybe add a bit of uh, underexposure brushing to the top of the frame. And finally, a small highlight on the car, which is a very dark metallic paint color, just to make it pop. To be able to deliver an image to a client in a single software title is a rarity, and the processing speed is greatly enhanced. So it minimizes the amount of time I spend on the computer and maximizes the amount of time that I spend out in the world making my art.